I study international economies from the perspective of a U.S. citizen currently living in the USA. I tend to state all prices and costs in U.S. dollars. It is my known currency and a default currency around the globe. But as you begin to travel internationally and work with foreign nationals who base their prices and costs on different currencies, you start to understand the need to comprehend currency exchanges, valuations, and cross-currency exchange rates. In this chapter, we will discuss the nature and operations in foreign exchange markets. I begin by describing the foreign exchange market and types of foreign exchange transactions. Emphasis is placed on interbank market for foreign exchange. This is where the action happens. We consider both the forward market and the futures market, two very related but different terms that you should understand and know how they differ. To find out, we will explore the market for foreign currency options. The role of the International Monetary Market of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange is emphasized in this section. We will discover how the determination of the equilibrium rate of exchange in a free market is made, using the sources of demand for foreign exchange and supply of foreign exchange. We will make distinction between the exchange rate of one currency in terms of another currency and the resulting trade-weighted value, also called an effective exchange rate. Finally, we will examine the nature and operation of uncovered interest arbitrage and covered interest arbitrage. The chapter concludes by examining foreign exchange market speculation. In addition, there is a segment on foreign exchange trading as a career. If you have ever traveled to a foreign country, you may have needed to exchange your money. If so, you have already participated in Forex trading. Forex is the short form of foreign exchange. Well, Forex is a bit more than that. For example, companies buy goods from other countries. In order to buy them, they need to obtain the local currency first, just like us when going on holiday. The difference is they will exchange huge amounts. When these companies exchange these huge amounts, they will actually move the price because the demand for the currency that they need increases. When the demand increases, the price increases. With all this exchanging going on around the world, the exchange rates constantly move. This is how it works. When currencies are exchanged, they have a certain price, the exchange rate. As in any market, the price of a currency is determined by the law of supply and demand. If there are many people or companies that want to change euros into dollars, the price of the dollar will rise against the euro, and so the exchange rate will change. Let's use an everyday example to explain how you can actually profit from this. Say you live in Europe and went on holiday to the United States. Let's say that you changed your 500 euros into US dollars at the rate of 1.4 dollars for every euro. You got 700 US dollars, but you do not spend any money at all. So you still have 700 dollars after you come back. After the exchange rate moved from 1.4 to 1.3, instead of getting just 500 euros back, you actually get 538 and a half euros. You have gained 38 and a half euros simply from holding your money in dollars while the exchange rate changed. This is essentially how we trade in the forex market. We buy a certain amount of a currency, hold on to it whilst the exchange rate moves, then change it back, making money along the way. How to decide when the right time to buy and sell is exactly what we teach you throughout the rest of our learning lessons. As you can imagine, traveling a lot and saving a bit of money on your holiday budget and then exchanging it, it's not really a practical approach to trading currencies. Fortunately, there is an easier way to do this. You can trade currency through online exchange offices called brokers. What this means is that you can exchange currencies online throughout the day and take advantage of the constantly fluctuating exchange rates. Just as in the example of when you went on holiday, you can buy different currencies and make a profit as the exchange rates change. This is trading the forex market. The foreign exchange market, commonly called the Forex, FX, or just currency market, 
is a global decentralized market where large international banks trade currencies. In terms of the volume traded daily, it is by far the largest market in the world. The exchange market is where the relative values of currencies are determined through up-to-the-minute exchange rate fixes. The exchange of currencies by banks and traders happens in all parts of the world, making the currency markets large and liquid. They are believed to be the most efficient financial markets anywhere. The foreign exchange market is not a single exchange floor. It is a global network of people and connected computers. The main foreign exchange trading centers are in London and New York City, although Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Singapore each trade significant volumes. The foreign exchange market is not a single central trading location like the New York Stock Exchange or the London Stock Exchange. Forex is a decentralized trading platform located in currency trading centers in every country, serving as anchors of trading between all types of buyers and sellers around the clock. The foreign exchange market is where the relative values of different currencies are determined and reported. These foreign exchange markets operate at three levels, commercial bank level, interbank level, and in active trading in foreign exchange with multinational banks. During an exchange transaction, one party purchases a needed currency by paying with a different currency. It might be a U.S. business importing something from Japan, with payment required in yen, even though its available currency is in U.S. dollars. The American company will make payment to their commercial bank's foreign exchange department in dollars. The bank's foreign exchange broker will perform the currency transfer at the current exchange rate between yen and dollars, advancing payment to the seller through the banking system delivering yen. The seller is paid and the buyer is charged. In retail currency exchange markets where small sums are exchanged, a different buying rate and selling rate will be quoted by money dealers. Most trades are to or from the local currency. The buying rate is the rate at which money dealers will buy foreign currency, and the selling rate is the rate at which they will sell the currency. The quoted rates incorporate an allowance for dealers' margin, their profit and risk expense allowance. Transactions reference currency pairs, such as euros exchanged for U.S. dollars, making the pair EUR slash USD, the widely traded pair. This makes a quotation of the relative value of the euro for the U.S. dollar. The currency that is used as the reference is called the base currency, and the currency that is quoted in relation is called the quote currency, or the counter currency. In this case, the EUR slash USD 1.1027 means that one euro can buy 1.1027 U.S. dollars. The euro in this case is the base currency, and the U.S. dollar is the quote currency. Exchange of currency occurs almost continuously as a matter of commercial commerce. Transaction of currencies between banks is not necessarily a physical swap of paper money. It is an electronic exchange of up to three types of transactions, spot, forward, and swap. A spot transaction is the fastest type of banking trade, normally taking two days to complete. This trade is a direct exchange of two currencies, requiring the shortest amount of time. On the spot transactions involve brokers exchanging cash rather than writing a contract. Spot trading is one of the most common types of forex trading. Most often, a forex broker will charge a small fee to the client to roll over the expiring transaction into a new identical transaction for the trade. The two-day turnaround is shorter with some currency exchanges, such as trades between commonly traded currencies like the US dollar, Canadian dollar, and the euro, which generally settle the same day or the next business day. A rollover fee is known as the swap fee, and is a variable rate charged by the broker. If the client is trading a large sum, the fee per unit of currency can be negotiated down, but small sums, under 50,000 US dollars, 
generally receive standard broker rates. When departing from the immediacy of a spot transaction, traders can seek time-delayed exchanges. However, the specifics of future date transactions leave future spot transaction details unknown. Risk is introduced and traders seek methods to reduce these risks where affordable. One way of dealing with foreign exchange risks is to engage in a forward transaction. In this transaction, money is exchanged at an agreed future date by the buyer and seller. The agreement is made for an exchange rate at a specific date. The duration of the trade can be one day, a few days, months, or years. Forward transactions give flexibility to buyers and sellers to establish expectations of currency values to coincide with future commercial activities. Assume a Canadian export company is selling U.S. $1 million worth of goods to a U.S. company and expects to receive payment a year from now. The Canadian exporter is concerned that the Canadian dollar may strengthen from its current rate of 1.2730 a year from now which means that it would receive fewer Canadian dollars expressed as U.S. dollars paid on delivery. The Canadian exporter negotiates a forward contract with the U.S. buyer to sell U.S. $1 million a year from now at a forward rate. Well, let's take a look at how this is calculated. Assume the current spot rate for the Canadian dollar of U.S. dollar 1 equals Canadian dollar 1.2730 and a one-year interest rate for Canadian dollars of 3%, and a one-year interest rate for the U.S. dollars of 1.5%. After one year, based on interest rate parity, USD1 plus interest at 1.5% would be equivalent to CAD 1.2730 plus interest at 3%. Working it out... <laughs> USD 1.015 equals CAD 1.3112, or USD 1 equals CAD 1.2918. Compare that to the current spot exchange rate of 1 to 1.2730, and see the difference of the forward rate at 1 to 1.2918. The forward contract assumes the Canadian dollar will appreciate. By locking in the forward rate in term, the exporter has benefited by Canadian dollars 18,800 versus selling the 1 million US dollars at the current spot rate of Canadian dollars 1.2730. On the other hand, if the spot rate a year from now drops to USD slash CAD 1.2500, meaning the Canadian dollar weakened contrary to the US dollar, the exporter would have lost 23,000 Canadian dollars by committing to the forward transaction with these terms. Currency markets are not a sure thing, so be confident about the estimates you make into contracts. They are binding on both parties. The most common type of forward transaction is the foreign exchange swap. These are agreements to carry a currency exchange between two foreign parties. It consists of swapping principal and interest payments on a loan made in one currency for principal and interest payments of a loan of equal value in another currency. These are not standardized contracts and are not traded through an exchange. A deposit is often required in order to hold the position open until the transaction is completed. These are encumbered when a company in the first nation loans money to a company in another nation. It may be for a business-related production expense necessary for delivery of the exchange of goods. The receiving company invests the capital in their business, located in the second country, and the interest identified in the contract reflects an interest rate anticipated in that second country. The foreign exchange swap enables the forward contract with the exchange of the currency and interest on the loan, denoted in expected exchange rate migrations over the contract's term. It is more complicated than a straightforward contract, but it gives both parties more leverage and more risk in contract term negotiations. Generally, spot transactions and foreign exchange swaps account for about 80% of the foreign exchange transactions seen in the world.
interbank trading is situated within both retail and wholesale transaction levels, generally categorized based on the number of currency units as above or below 1 million units. Retail banks dealing with currency exchange are located within all commercial banks of a country. A few large international banks in the U.S. have active currency trading operations with offshore branches or active accounts with foreign banking centers. When clients need to exchange the domestic currency for an equivalent amount of a different currency, the client moves deposited funds to the local branch. The money is moved to a correspondent account at one of the large bank centers, and converted currency is made available through reverse channels. The result is generally a spot transaction, but not exclusively. Keep in mind, the International Currency Exchange Platform is the largest exchange system in the world, dealing with the equivalent of millions of dollars hourly. Banks provide the service to their clients of exchanging currencies. These services require trained people responsive to the continuously changing situations in many locations around the globe. The level of currency exchange sensitivity requires constant attention. You should treat currencies as a commodity, bought and sold as if it were gasoline or automobiles. Cross-currency prices fluctuate, generally within small ranges and sometimes with large swings. Because of the high stakes involved, A system of currency exchange parameters has been developed, allowing brokers to interact efficiently while conducting trades. The initiating bank will make both a bid rate and an offer rate for a currency pair on the spot market. It might be USD slash EUR at a bid rate of 0.90623, offer rate 0.90723, with a spread of 0.0010. The spread is the gap between the two rates and allows the bank to cover expenses and turn a profit. The price quote of USD slash EUR is an example of a bid-ask notation for the USD slash EUR, 0.90623 slash 0.90723. The spread is 0.0010, a narrow overhead reserved for large exchanges. In this example, the bank would generate a $1,000 fee on a $1 million exchange, where the bank simultaneously purchases and sells the foreign currency. Brokers of currencies deal in speculation by attempting to anticipate the strengthening and weakening of currencies against each other. A large bank may increase their bid price for another currency to boost their position on a target currency thus capturing the profits when the cross-currency rates change. It takes an able banking analyst to execute trades like this. Generally, they are enhanced with up-to-the-second global trading computer networks, with commensurate number of multinational trading analysts. Currency exchange rates are reported on several online sites, available on demand for users. When you find an online reporting site, make sure you verify the currency of their quotes and that the terms are stated clearly. Generally, the rates reported are the midpoint between the bid price and the offer prices, so it is doubtful you could get, or receive, exactly that rate for your currency exchange. On this online conversions website, The rate quoted is the bid price for the currency pair, not the mid-range between bid and offer. Be aware of the accuracy and your understanding when you conduct your transactions. I talked about the broker who may increase purchases of a currency because they anticipate a currency appreciation with respect to another currency. This happens when the anticipated exchange rate of country 1 experiences an increase in value as compared to country 2. These are only seen in respect to floating exchange rate systems. Currency depreciation is the opposite effect. Keep in mind, one currency may increase in value simultaneously with another currency, but their relations to other currencies may diverge in cross-currency valuation terms. If the Canadian dollar depreciates relative to the euro, 
the exchange rate of the Canadian dollar rises. It takes more Canadian dollars to purchase 1 euro. We may currently be at 1 euro equals 1.40 CAD, Canadian dollars, but anticipated to depreciate to a new exchange rate of 1 euro equal to 1.5 Canadian dollars. When the Canadian dollar depreciates relative to the euro, Canadian goods become more competitive on world markets because their price, when exchanged to euros, becomes lower. This results in an increase of Canadian exports. Simultaneously, European sellers will be less competitive in Canada because European products converted to Canadian dollars from euros will be more expensive in Canada. The cross-currency exchange rate is used to make conversions between foreign currencies, like the Canadian dollar and the Chinese yuan. It is used when you have data about the exchange rates between a third currency, like the US dollar, and each of the target currencies. The fraction of their cross-currency rates generates the exchange rates between the target currencies. In today's interconnected world, tables like this are available, but always check the date and time of the report. I have talked about spot markets, forward markets, and currency swaps, and now I introduce you to the currency futures market. A currency futures contract specifies the price at which a currency can be bought or sold at a future date. Currency future contracts allow investors to hedge against foreign exchange risk or to speculate in anticipated favorable currency value swings. Futures contracts are offered by an underwriter and made available to investors. Unlike the forward markets, where the parties of the exchange are linked through commerce, the futures market participants are speculators, who usually exit their positions before the dates of settlement, so most contracts do not tend to last until the scheduled date of delivery. These are investment tools. Currency futures contracts are marked to market daily. Investors can exit or divest their obligation to buy or sell the currency prior to the contract's delivery date. Currency futures set the exchange price when the contract is signed and establish a predetermined future delivery date. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange takes currency futures into the realm of the commodity futures market. Agricultural commodities like corn, wheat, beef, or pork have been traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange since it opened in 1971. In 1972, the International Monetary Market, or IMM, was introduced to formalize the futures of currencies by pioneering the trading of international financial derivatives. The IMM is especially popular with smaller banks, domestic companies, and individuals wanting to participate in currency speculation with a global footprint. Here, recognize the major differences between the forward contract and a futures contract. We have discussed a few intended uses for each type. One of the key characteristics between these contracts is that a forward contract contractually obligates the parties to carry out the transaction at the agreed date and time, even if the market has substantially changed since the date of signing. A futures contract is handled differently and we will explore these arrangements next. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange maintains a reporting protocol for currency traders to view market data, updated during trading days. The reports include daily criteria, like open, close, high, and low exchange rates. These are available for active traders buying and selling contracts needing up-to-the-minute reports. People deal in futures contracts for price discovery, which helps predict future spot prices, hedging, which protects against future price declines and anticipates future rising prices, and speculation. A speculator does not own or take possession of the commodity. He or she only hopes to profit from the rise or fall of the price of the contract. Hedgers are traders that actually own the underlying commodity and also hope to profit from their transactions.
A foreign currency option gives the holder the right to buy or sell a fixed amount of a foreign currency at an agreed price on an agreed date. The holder, also called the buyer, can choose the exchange rate and term to guarantee. The holder of the contract has the right to buy or sell at the contracted terms, but not the obligation. The first option is a call option, giving the holder the right to buy foreign currency at the agreed rate. The second is the put option, giving the holder the right to sell the foreign currency at an identified rate. The price of the specified currency pair is called the strike price. While the holder of the contract is under no obligation, the writer of the contract is under contractual obligation and must perform within the terms specified. Foreign currency options are used by multinational corporations negotiating sizable deals with foreign companies who will pay in the foreign currency. Often, contract terms will specify a delivery date and payment terms. An American company may enter into a one-year agreement with a Chinese firm to sell timber products, as round logs, to a Chinese lumber mill. The agreement may be for 12 months, with weekly shipments scheduled as an agreed-on price, payable in Chinese yuan. The American firm is concerned with exchange rate risk, as it considers if the yuan devalues during the one-year period, the contract's value converted into dollars will devalue as well. In order to hedge against the loss of revenue, the American firm may purchase put options, enabling it to sell Chinese yuan for U.S. dollars at the specified rate. When the put option is secured by the U.S. timber company, the risk of the Chinese yuan dropping in value relative to the U.S. dollar is limited to the cost of the initial put option. On the other hand, if the yuan rises in value relative to the U.S. dollar, the timber company can bypass the currency options alternative and trade currencies on the spot market. This form of hedging your revenue or cost stream is bounded only by the cost of the put option and your time. Thinking of currencies as commodities is new territory for many of us. But really, it is not as abstract as we may think. Once, the gold standard was globally recognized as the monetary system in which the standard economic unit of account was based on a fixed quantity of a commodity, gold. Now, we go full circle as currencies are traded. How do we determine the free market price for currencies? Well. We will take a look. We explored the importance of a nation's balance of payments in Chapter 10, and how the debt items are tallied based on foreign demand for the domestic goods and assets. This gives expression of the demand for foreign exchange as a derived demand. The value of a foreign currency in the United States is influenced by the demand for foreign currency in the domestic market used to purchase goods from other nations using foreign currency. While the demand side of the balance of payments ledger is driven by the debts side of the balance of payments, the credit side of the ledger refers to the amount of foreign exchange that will be offered to the market at various exchange rates, driving the supply of foreign exchange. It hinges on the desire of the foreign currency users to import and pay for U.S.-made goods and services, lend funds and make investments in the U.S., and repay debts to U.S. lenders. On this chart, we see dollars per pound on the y-axis and pounds on the x. British pounds are displayed as supply with the schedule for the demand of foreign exchange generated from the U.S. balance of payments statement. This intersection identifies the exchange rate between the currencies, the U.S. dollar and the British pound. The equilibrium price shown here identifies the exchange rate, 2 US dollars per pound, with 3 billion pounds exchanged. Foreign exchange markets for the major currencies are precisely cleared, leaving neither excess supply nor excess demand. Shifts in demand and supply happen for a variety of economic and political reasons, making new equilibrium shifts migrate the currency pair prices. 
Currency pair time series valuations are useful for everyone involved in currency exchange activities. It is important to understand that two trading partners in different countries will experience socioeconomic trends affecting their individual currency values. These trends are realized on the currency pair exchange rate. However, if the trading partner countries experience similar currency valuation shifts, their cross-currency exchange rate may be minimal. At the same time, the exchange rates between either country and a third country might signal the appreciation or devaluation of the subject currencies. For this reason, it is advisable to track cross-currency rates between several nations to understand changes to the specific values of the commodities called international currencies. The Effective Exchange Rate Index is a weighted average of exchange rates of domestic versus foreign currencies, with the weight for each foreign currency equal to its share in trade. These are most useful for time series tracking of the subject currency against most other traded currencies. Trends and cycles are identified within these records, generally exceeding five-year periods, extending to many decades. The Nominal Exchange Rate Index refers to the dollar price of foreign exchange, but does not reflect changes in price levels or inflation for the domestic or foreign currencies. It provides a price level comparison across currencies, based on the transactions as they happened. When kept in these nominal terms, index value changes through time periods indicates appreciation or devaluation of the domestic currency in reference to other currencies. By keeping inflationary factors embedded in the nominal values, it gives indication of how each nation's prices respond to macroeconomic cycles. A problem of interpreting the nominal exchange rate index is that prices are not constant through time. In the U.S., they change in response to competition, the value of the dollar, and in response to the value of our trading partner's currency. From this report, it is impossible to determine if the price change was unilateral or country-specific. The real exchange rate is the relative price of goods across countries incorporating changes in economic factors. Hence, changes in the real exchange rate affect the competitiveness of traded goods. Real exchange rate is the nominal exchange rate adjusted for relative price levels. Both price level entries are measured in units of domestic currency per unit of foreign currency. This example addresses the nominal exchange rate for the US dollar and euro was 90 cents per euro in 2013 and 80 cents in 2014, showing a drop in competitiveness of U.S. goods relative to European goods. Now, incorporating a consumer price index, we set 2013 to the base year with a cross-currency value of 100. By 2014, the U.S. consumer prices increased to 108, while European prices increased to 102. The real exchange rate in 2014 reveals a rate of $0.7556, indicating that U.S. goods are less competitive on the European market, seen because the U.S. dollar appreciated in nominal terms while U.S. prices increased faster than European prices. In nominal terms, the U.S. dollar appreciated by 11% against the euro, with nominal exchange rates moving from $0.90 cents to $0.80, cents. but in real terms, it appreciated by 16%. This gives a clearer picture of the relative strength of the currencies commingled with the change in prices. Think of the nominal exchange rate as the rate you can buy another currency using your primary currency. It might be holding US dollars and wanting to buy euros. It is an exchange of currencies. The real exchange rate incorporates the ability of each currency to purchase goods and services. Each exchange is influenced by a broad range of factors, but the real exchange rate generates the comparison between them through time.
Ну, везде все дорожает потихонечку, конечно. В крупных компаниях потихонечку начинается сокращение рабочих мест. Все это, конечно, незаметно для большинства людей, но понимающие люди уже видят все. Today we saw the ruble opening quite weak, uh, breaching, finally breaching the 40 level. And it's worth noting that on Friday in late uh, hours trading we already saw this level, so today this was just the natural uh, continuation of this trend. In terms of currencies, we can talk of changes as appreciation and depreciation in respect to what can be bought with the monetary unit. If you are limited to only one country, in Atarki, you may not recognize your currency's purchasing power changes. If your country is involved in international trade, the effects might be seen or they may go unnoticed. The real exchange rate gives us the measure of a currency's relative change with respect to other currencies. These relative changes can be measured worldwide or they can be discovered one commodity at a time. We will take a look at one simple commodity, a bottle of milk. Currently, a liter of milk sells for 90 cents in Seattle and 1 euro 23 in Paris. For this single commodity, the real exchange rate is influenced by the relative price competition between countries for the commodity specifically and generally by the purchasing power of the individual currencies. We can push the numbers through our real exchange rate calculator to discover how the 90 cents US that bought a liter of milk in Seattle would only get me 67.5% of a liter of the same milk in Paris. This 67.5% conversion is applicable only to a liter of milk, but you can create these for the commodity you produce for international trade. When your commodity's value is less than parity, meaning it is less than one, you have profitable export opportunities. We have been exploring several aspects of economic realities to determine relationship between currencies and product prices. This is because the real exchange rate is a relative price of goods across countries. Hence, changes in the real exchange rate affect the competitiveness of traded goods. Common sense tells us prices will equalize within a short time. And when it does, we call it purchasing power parity. More on that soon. When applied to currencies, exchange arbitrage is seen when cross-currency exchange rates equalize across all currency markets. With market arbitrage in effect, brokers can find the spot exchange rate for US dollars to euros in New York or 1 to 0 0.90481, and find the inverse exchange rate for euros to dollars in Bonn, West Germany, for 1 to 1 1.10521. In reality, the rates will be loaded with a conversion fee, but arbitrage gives a simultaneous currency price in all locations. The factor underlying the uniformity of exchange rates is called exchange arbitrage. Because currency markets operate as one global market, exchange rate differential opportunities are rare, but possible. I share example with you now from 1998, when I was the CEO and general manager operating a logging camp in the Russian Far East, harvesting timber from Russian forest lands. Logs were sorted and placed on ships bound for the west coast Japan and to South Korea. The buyers were Japanese companies paying in yen and South Korean companies paying in won. My operation was a joint venture, American and Russian. A challenge was found when converting yen or won into rubles. Very little trade was enacted immediately after the collapse of the Soviet Union with Japan or South Korea. So supply and demand between these currencies was soft. However, the Russian Federation was selling gas to Europe in large volumes. The ruble-euro exchange was active. Substantial trade was, and still is, enacted using the euro-yen and euro-won exchanges. 
Converting yen and yuan to U.S. dollars was part of commonly traded pairs, so U.S. operations were paid through existing forex markets and no currency arbitrage was needed. We used the exchange arbitrage strategy to convert the yen and yuan paid for timber to exchange it favorably for euros, which were then exchanged for rubles, so we could pay our Russian staff their salaries, the federal and cry governments their taxes, and to cover Russian costs of operations in rubles. At the time, it facilitated international trade between these currencies. It remains a viable alternative for trading partners to consider, especially when political constraints are put on a country that is also involved in international trade. Suppose that baskets of goods are produced in the U.S. and Germany, both identical, and all goods were tradable. In that case, net of transportation costs, we would have the law of one price. Arbitrage would ensure that the dollar prices of the various goods would be identical across countries. This yields a theory of exchange rate determination known as purchasing power parity, or PPP. We have explored how exchange rates adjust to compensate for currency movements along the valuation horizon. Commodity prices move as well, and when their price movements are out of the range of the currency movements, prices can leave the range of parity between markets. These events give rise to hedging opportunities for traders in buy and sell decisions. Currencies are exchanged on the basis of their supply and demand factors integrating the relative economic conditions of their host nations. Although I recommended you consider currencies as commodities, the extension of that label reaches only so far as their entrance into exchange markets. Commodities enter into arbitrage opportunities as production costs, tax systems, and government regulations change cost profiles to purchase goods. When prices for similar commodities in different markets diverge, consumer opportunities for arbitrage are available. The same situation happens to product prices when countries migrate to different price levels, dragging the currency valuations askew of their former relative value. There are several causes of this migration, but currency supply and demand factors show the relative adjustments for the nominal exchange rates, and therefore, affect real exchange rates. Purchasing power parity gaps are sometimes found between currency markets. These arise when traders can find price gaps between brokers for different currencies. It might be a two-point arbitrage situation where U.S. dollars buy euros in New York and the proceeds are immediately used to sell euros for dollars in London. If the prices are such that a favorable differences are available, the trader can make a risk-free profit. These opportunities are rare. More intricate and potentially profitable is three-point arbitrage opportunity. This happens when three currencies are traded within three trading centers. In this case, U.S. dollars are traded for British pounds. In the second, British pounds are traded for Swiss francs. And in the third, Swiss francs are traded for U.S. dollars. In our theoretical example, the arbitrager started with 1.5 million U.S. dollars and turned a cool half million for the efforts, less their expenses. This is not dissimilar to the example I shared with you from 1998 as I sold Russian timber for yin and yuan, traded it for euros, and purchased rubles. It was not a profit-seeking endeavor. Instead, it was a strategy to maintain currency values during transactions. Polypoint arbitrage can include more currencies and more trading centers. This type of currency trading is not illegal, but in today's world of interconnected computer systems and optimized processing centers, opportunities like this can be found. Participants in a forward market enter into contract to exchange currencies, not today, but at a specified date in the future, typically 30, 60, or 90 days from entering the contract, and at an agreed forward exchange rate. The exchange rate is agreed at the time of contract signing, but payment is not made until the actual delivery date. These contracts are made by big players, 
in terms of currencies available to the forward market contract, the big commercial businesses involved, and the large banking centers who underwrite the contracts. These are not generally entered for less than $1 million each. They are made profitable for the underwriting bank by initiating currency transactions between many customers and many currencies. The banks manage the spreads of their currencies and in effect create their own arbitrage opportunities with minor deviations between buy and sell agreements. The banks turn a profit from these activities. The rate of exchange used in the settlement of forward transactions is called the forward rate. In Forex, the forward rate specified in an agreement is a contractual obligation that must be honored by the parties involved. Forward rates are widely used for hedging purposes in the currency markets. Currency forwards can be tailored for specific requirements, unlike futures, which have fixed contract sizes and expiry dates and therefore cannot be customized. Administered similar to the spot market in terms of cross-currency value, the forward rates are stalled in respect to the date of agreement and the date of execution. When the foreign currency is worth more in the forward market than in the spot market, the rate is said to be at a premium. When it is less, it is called a discount. The forward rate is calculated with the rates applied in reference to the spot market on the date of agreement, adjusted for time span involved, usually expressed as annualized rates. In this example, we look at a one-month forward for British pounds selling for $1.6036, while the spot rate was $1.6039. Because the forward rate was less than the spot price, the pound was at a one-month forward discount of 0.22% per annum against the dollar. Here, see example of one-month forward rates from 2013 for the yen and pound expressed in U.S. dollars. Setting of the rates is dependent on expected market shifts, overhead expenses, and premiums or discounts applied by the banks. Currency market investors with high risk tolerance will seek currencies where the first country currency is experiencing high interest rates and a counter country is experiencing low interest rates. It might be the UK with high inflation and the USA with a low interest rate in comparison. That risk-tolerant speculator will buy pounds with dollars in the spot market and sell pounds for dollars in the forward market. Because the interest rate is high in the UK, with a short amount of time, the spot price goes from $2 per pound to $2.01 per pound. At the same time, the forward price of the pound falls by a similar amount to $1.99 per pound. The small simultaneous shifts between spot and forward prices enables the speculator to capture the value with perfect timing. Of course, it can be lost just as fast. When managing international business activities, businesses will prepare proposals, develop cost and price scenario, arrange timing details, and await concurrence with their business partners. Contracts can take days weeks, or even months to complete. Generally, cost scenarios will change within the time it takes to execute an agreement, and currency values will shift. Time is on the side of the last one to the party, because the first in the door has the oldest time-sensitive values. When the agreement is inked, contracts take on the challenge of time of delivery and payment. We have looked at options for commercial businesses to enter into forward and futures markets, but each option costs the business money. When should hedging be used as a risk reduction tool? When hedging against potential losses, the company is interested in finding the optimal operations zone of lowest costs to achieve the desired risk reduction level. You would break even if you tried to save $100,000 in currency devaluation changes, but the forward contract you bought cost $100,000. Conversely, you would accept a $10,000 cost of the same level of protection, but the situation might also turn out that the currency devaluation risk turned into an appreciation event, making the $10,000 cost worthless. It is a sunk cost so the cost is non-refundable. Some businesses take an aggressive protection stance, 
covering their exposure to an acceptable level. Others take currency changes as part of the business risk profile and live in the balance. These decisions are economic choices made by a business overall or from one project at a time. Investors make financial decisions by comparing the rates of return of foreign investments with those of domestic investments. Uncovered interest arbitrage involves switching currencies from domestic tender carrying a lower interest rate to a foreign currency that offers a higher rate of interest on deposits. There is a foreign exchange risk implicit in this transaction since the investor or speculator will need to convert the foreign currency deposit proceeds back into the domestic currency at some point in the future. The term uncovered in this arbitrage scenario refers to the fact that this foreign exchange risk is not covered through a forward or futures contract. Covered interest arbitrage uses favorable interest rate differentials to invest in a higher yielding currency and hedging the exchange risk through a forward or futures currency contract. The cost of hedging the exchange risk can be less than the additional return generated by investing in a higher yielding currency if the higher yielding currency delivers the anticipated returns. Such arbitrage opportunities are uncommon since market participants will rush in to exploit an arbitrage opportunity when one is found and the resultant demand will quickly redress the imbalance. An investor undertaking this strategy is making simultaneous spot and forward market transactions with an overall goal of obtaining risk-free profit through the combination of currency pairs. Covered interest arbitrage is not without risks, which include differing tax treatment in various jurisdictions. Foreign exchange or capital controls, transaction costs, and bid-ask spreads. As you consider these values, understand the potential differences shown here. Result in a small percentage gap. If you are dealing with large sums of capital, it may be attractive. But these do not just leap out into the account of the multinational company. It takes concentrated time and action to position the firm to capture it. Many businesses are focused on the goal of manufacturing a product or providing a service and delivering that core business activity. Seeking marginal gains from currency trades is often overlooked or shunted to specialists managing these aspects of the business's operations. Sometimes it makes a shining marginal gain. Other times it is a setback to an otherwise successful operation. The foreign exchange market is often used for exchange rate speculation. Speculators ultimately are a stabilizing influence on financial markets by stabilizing speculation and providing a market for hedgers, transferring risk from people who don't wish to bear risk to those who will just do it. Large hedge funds and other well-capitalized position traders are the primary professional speculators. According to some economists, Individual traders act as noise traders and have a more destabilizing role than larger and better informed investment professionals. At the same time, the rise in algorithmic foreign exchange auto trading has increased from 2% in 2004 up to 40% by 2010, making automated speculation precise and immediate. Currency speculation is considered a highly suspect activity in some countries flirting with criminal behavior, while investment in traditional financial instruments like bonds or stocks is positive for economic growth by providing capital, currency, speculation serves only the speculator's bank account. It does not serve the purpose of growing an economy. Antagonists see the link between speculators who take advantage of market disruptions and destabilized economies to the point Speculators may initiate destabilizing activities to reap profitable gains. Taking a snapshot of algorithmic foreign exchange auto trading in YouTube, 
you can find hundreds of positive software solutions and opinions about how to make your name as a forex trader with little or no experience. This is the noise traders just mentioned. But these are also used by well-capitalized position traders to test their speculations. Interested in a foreign exchange trading career? Well, your job prospects may be with a bank or a company involved in foreign trading activities, or you might join the squads of day traders from the comfort of your personal computer. Starting from home does not mean you must stay there, but success does not mean that you should leave there either. Entry into these positions is targeted at either technically efficient trading specialists capable of predicting event outcomes based on experience and economic knowledge. Others in this industry hold specific knowledge about certain economic sectors, blended with economic event knowledge making speculation possible. Still, others are involved in the day-to-day -day operations of banking activities to make trades and exchanges on behalf of clients. I appreciate this top 10 list published by Equities.com giving the budding foreign exchange trader advice about the chosen career. If this fits your personality, hmm, you might build a career. I covered the broad topic of foreign exchange markets and discussed their operations. I described the foreign exchange market and the types of foreign exchange transactions with emphasis placed on the interbank market for foreign exchange transactions. We considered the forward market and futures market, and also the market for foreign currency options. The role of the international monetary market of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange was emphasized. We spent time to understand how the equilibrium rate of exchange in a free market is determined, and identified how sources of demand for foreign exchange and the supply of foreign exchange are recognized. We made distinction between the exchange rate of one currency in terms of another currency and the trade weighted value of a currency leading to the effective exchange rate. Finally, we examined the nature and operation of uncovered interest arbitrage and covered interest arbitrage as a means of hedging against potential losses from currency exchanges while examining foreign exchange market speculation. We concluded with a segment on foreign exchange as a trading career. Multinational companies are in the position of concentrating their businesses on making a manufactured product or providing a service, often delivering a combination of the two to companies located in other countries. These factors are the focus of their business enterprise, and cross-currency exchange rates with forward, futures, and interest rates, arbitrage, and speculation not being the highest topics of attention. This is where the specialist with skills and understanding of these events can serve the multinational enterprise to ensure capital flows are facilitated and even increase net returns through astute planning. It might be the trajectory you find most interesting for your career.